Hello everyone and welcome to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I hope to make up for the fiasco at the end of the previous episode uh, by doing quite a number of possible changes. But first things first, I wanted to check out whether it was the version of Deadly Reentry I was using because I had changed from Deadly Reentry 6.4.0 to 6.5.0 Beta in order to get rid of that parachute message. But strictly speaking, I don't need to worry about the parachute message for this series because this is not the cinematic series. So I'm trying to revert to 6.4.0 first to see if maybe it was just a version change that caught me off guard. And maybe something has changed in 6.5.0. And so this is just a test of that. And I'll do it quickly. I'm using the Alpha 5 rocket, which is not a not dual staged in the center. It's just... Uh, single thing and uh, we'll see about the temperatures on this and uh, if it uh, turns out the same way that's fine it's uh, 95 funds it's not too bad and I will do other fixes I still want to keep trying to do stuff without fins that's deliberate I want to see if I can get into space without using any control surfaces but uh, eventually we're going to use control surfaces in order to reduce the initial delta V that uh, not the delta not the delta V the thrust weight ratio that we need. Uh, so we are using a very high initial thrust weight ratio in order to maintain our upward attitude, but we could use fins to do that instead. So I'm just see seeing the limits of where I can go with this. Some uh, uh, two people mentioned that there is uh, experiment on this, so I'll do that along the way. All right, let's take this out to launch pad for a quick experiment to see whether it was just a change in daily reentry version. Okay, here we are. So, throttle up. Not that it matters, because these things only have one throttle setting anyway. And, yep, let's just find out. Now, uh, let me just zoom in and see the experiment. Uh, probe situation report. Okay, we can transmit that. We'll get higher altitude ones later. Let me close the rendezvous window. We're not going to be using that for a long time. Interesting that these, uh, not these, the decouplers overheat. Uh, it must be because they're resized, because 282 is way low for overheating. Probably it's the resizing of them that caused that. Don't know if that affects the nose cone as well. I didn't think so. I, uh, it looked like the nose cone was holding up pretty well under the temperature. It was just that the temperature was going up so much. Gotta yeah, keep an eye on the temperature, of course. Our contract is for 80 kilometers or otherwise exiting the atmosphere. This is pretty standard. Actually, this is actually a little bit slow for, uh, for a rocket at this point. I should point out that, uh, that the Saturn V rocket would have been traveling... Uh, once we reach 13 kilometers, it'd be going 500 meters per second. So just as a benchmark, that's good. Uh, it reached Mach 1 at 7,800 meters. So uh, it reached 300 meters per second at 7,800 meters altitude. So if you're wondering about that, that's, uh, that's sort of the velocity targets we're talking about. So we're actually not too, f too fast when you look at it. That's, of course, uh, Earth fixed velocity. That's uh, surface velocity we're talking about. Now, now the temperature is going up much more like I would have expected. Remember, uh, in the previous episode, we saw that the temperature wasn't going up at all until we hit 36 kilometers, and only when we hit 36 kilometers did the temperature actually start to rise, and it then it ro rose very, very quickly. Here, uh, it's starting to rise much earlier and much smoother, and so this is more of what I would expect, and so I think the beta version of the new Delhi reentry is what caught me off guard. Let's see what happens when we pass 36 kilometers here. So this is uh, 
4.0 and uh, there is no option to get rid of the parachute thing, though of course uh, we don't have any parachutes on board so it doesn't really matter. Uh, no, that's engine group controller. Okay, so no weird heating at 36 kilometers this time. Okay, so I think 6.5.0 of daily re-entry is very beta. I'm going to leave that be for now and I'm going to stick to 6.4.0 despite the parachute warning. I see, I feel somewhat vindicated now actually. Uh, honestly, it was not my fault. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy that my numbers were right and uh, it was not not my fault that everything went wrong. Of course, it is my fault that we are going inland <laughs> instead of towards the water. That that is my fault. Though this thing is going to explode in uh, on its way down. It's not going to reach the ground at all. But yeah, I'm I'm happy. I am now happy. We have fulfilled the 80 kilometer contract, and I believe we will reach space. Yeah. Uh, somebody mentioned that the 5,000 meter contract was only for manned missions, so I made a mistake in uh, completing that. Uh, that should have been done with uh, Kerbal on board, and so there's about 2,000, 3,000 funds that I shouldn't be having here. I, I don't think we're going to get to the point where that's going to be critical, but uh, just in case, I'll, I'll make a side note of that. Okay, here we are approaching space. And there we go, we have escaped the atmosphere, as planned with this rocket. Let's, uh, let's see if we can do more situation reporting. Yes, we can. In space above, unfortunately, the grasslands instead of the water. Uh, <laughs> sorry, people of Florida. <laughs> I've uh, made a little mistake here. So now we should put fins on. I, uh, well, I don't know. Could I get to orbit without fins? What do you think? Uh, okay, so we've got that science. Huh. We've retained communication a lot longer than I thought we would have. Very long rocket. And I fully expect it to destroy itself here. Let me just check that the heating amount is what I would expect it to be. You know what? <clears throat> you know what? It, uh, it's actually a little bit lower than I'd expect it to be. Hmm. Maybe the truth is somewhere between 6.4.0 deadly ranty and 6.0. 5.0 beta. Somewhere between there lies the numbers that I would actually expect. Huh. Okay, uh, let me pause for a bit and take a look at the change logs of deadly reentry to see uh, what, what went on there, and I'll come back to you once I've uh, got a few more answers. Okay, so reading from the change log directly for version 6.5.0, it says, Alternate heating system. Instead of trying to accurately model heat transfer in a game system that has no concept of it, which is true, uh, this uses a system adapted from an empirical formula meant for graphing heating over time. Uh, added use alternate heat mo model and ablation metric to config files to support new system, and a lot of stuff about the ablation rate. And so it's this new alternate heating system that we're talking about here. And probably it's better than the normal heating system. And my knowledge of thermodynamics is shoddy at best. So I'm not going to try and say that there's a mistake here. Uh, but, but maybe I'll wait until all the kinks are worked out and this moves out of beta before I use the new version of Delhi Reentry, even though it's uh, supposed to be more accurate. I'm going to wait until uh, it's... It's a little bit uh, more, more sure, certain than it is right now. So I'll stick to 6.4.0 in this, uh, even though it is, well, I don't know. You know, it'd be interesting to try and see if I can make a rocket that will get around that, isn't it? So, tell you what, 
uh, first thing I will try to uh, put back in 6.5.0 beta and I'm going to try and make a rocket that will get around that region of intense heating but then I'm going to go back to 6.4.0 all right so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to quit the program and let's try that out okay so now we are under the auspices of it says 6.4.0 here but this is uh, 6.5.0 beta and you can tell because it's got the parachute warning and it's got the alternate heating model and all that so this is actually 6.5.0 even though it says it's 6.4.0 and I am going to load up the Alpha 5 again and we're going to build a rocket that can get through this let's see see the key is that I didn't realize that this was going to be a thing sudden large amounts of heating at 36 kilometers but now that I know I should be able to figure out how to work around it and it is a two-stage thing it is a matter of getting two stages in somehow the problem is uh, last time when I was using the the aerobe sustainer on the second stage the aerobe sustainer has a max thrust of 6.7 and that's also its minimum thrust uh, and the problem with that of course is that that's that's too high uh, we uh, we really don't want it uh, going that fast on the second stage so I'm going to use a solid fuel, fuel solid fuel booster and then we're going to see what we can do with that uh, well the problem with solid fuel booster is that it's tiny uh, in other words uh, limited to 0.2 I could uh, unlock the next tier and maybe that would give me larger boosters but maybe I'll just resize this battery uh, it is a cone already anyway. I forget, I think the SRBs, what kind of... Yeah, their ISP is better than the liquid rocket anyway. The benefit to liquid rocket is that it's, well, it's, uh, it's more powerful. Uh, I mean, of course, these could be more powerful. All I have to do is reduce the burn time. But right now you see this one has burn time of 81, well, I don't really want it, 80 seconds. Uh, 80 seconds and its thrust is only 1.3 kilonewtons at sea level 1.4 at vacuum okay so let's let's get some fairings on oh that again let's have a limit of uh, four on the max TWR let's see get these on properly okay let's say this is alpha 9 I don't remember what number we were on but uh, let's just call it alpha 9 check staging so we'll have a lower initial thrust I don't know if that's a good idea but we can light this engine um, part way if we want to okay that's interesting I really need to put some music in the background of this. I've turned off the the game music, but maybe some other music would be good. Anyway, uh, here we go. Let's see what happens. Looks like we're relatively stable upward. Oh, it might be deviating in the correct direction this time. Yay! Where is the sun? You know... I think I have to time warp a little bit to check out that the sun's really hitting the landscape properly. Uh, I hate the aliasing that uh, OpenGL tosses on these things. Okay, I'm gonna pre-light the center rocket now. And eject those off. Still going up. And once we hit around 36 kilometers, I'm gonna shut this engine down no matter what. And then we'll wait until things cool down. 
This is not fast for uh, Rocket Around Earth, by the way. We are actually going slow compared to what normal rockets do right about now. And that's because we're going more vertically. Uh, by now, uh, an actual rocket would be quite a bit more horizontal. And, of course, we're going vertically because I don't have much control and I want to get high rather than uh, trying to get into orbit. Okay, I, I think the rocket will run out pretty much the right time. A little bit, it's got a little bit extra fuel on this stage. Okay, let's shut down the rocket. And I'm gonna stage off. Okay, good. Cooling. Gotta wait till the ambient temperature is, uh, has topped off. Uh, but our pitch is going bad here. Let's light the let's light the solid fuel booster now. Okay, uh, we're quite a bit more horizontal than I'd like to be. Let's see what happens. At least we're not aimed at Florida now. We're very much over the ocean. Tough to see though. Very tough to see. Somebody suggested uh, RSS visual enhancements, and yeah, that's a thing. Uh, I'm testing it out off, onto the, off to the side. I'm trying to exert some pitch control, but there's nothing really. On the right side, the temperature situation seems to be okay. We're c cruising through this region of reckless abandon. Interesting that the temperature stopped going up right when we uh, let go of the liquid fuel rocket. Very interesting. But now it's going up uh, tremendously very quickly. because Well, we're headed down for one thing. Uh, but also, our acceleration is quite high. Well, not very high, but considering what this region of the atmosphere seems to do, it is. So yeah, after this test, uh, I mean, I could refine this more and try to get to space with it, but at least we passed through the region of intense heating. I'm going to go back to deadly re-entry 6.4.0 until 6.5.0 has uh, gone out of beta. This is sort of strange, actually. We're... Uh, Head straight down, and it's not exceeding 800. It's it's very much not exceeding 800 degrees Celsius. Look at that. It's hit a ceiling at 800 degrees Celsius and will not go higher than that. And th that's the region where we overheated. I is it possible that the heating is reversed? I mean that. I mean it makes makes no sense. I mean when we're pointed straight down, going at high speed, we should be heating up more, right? Kind of thing? I don't know. I need to learn thermodynamics because uh, I don't... Uh, I, I, I literally do not know m uh, many thermodynamic equations at all, so I can't say anything, but it seems wrong somehow. It definitely seems wrong. This thing should have blown up. Why didn't it blow up? Huh. Yeah, okay, so this is why I'm going to go back to the older version of Delhi Reentry, because I don't understand this right now. Oh, can we do an experiment while we're floating down here? No, it's the same one. Grasslands. Do I not have custom biomes installed? It looks like water. We are over water, right? Yep, we're definitely over water. How do you figure grasslands? Custom Biomes comes with RSS, uh, Real Solar System, so should be in there. Okay. I would say that the result is indeterminate. I don't know whether it was water or not. It didn't make a splash. It didn't make a crash. It just disappeared. I do have better buoyancy, by the way. Uh, I need to make sure to put the 
the mod list in the video description. All right, so, well, okay, I'm gonna quit out again and I'm gonna put back in the re-entry 6.4.0 and we'll move on from there. Okay, let me time warp a bit so that we can get some more light on this situation. Oh, well, I guess it is winter. That wasn't very bright. We, we got a good look at the landscape for a second there, but then went all dark on us. Well, let, let, let's go through. Well, what is this? Oh, uh, let's just recover that debris. That's just the launch clamps. Let's go through a day. I, I know about the city lights, by the way. Um, I'm just trying out uh, RSS visual enhancements on the side to see if maybe it'll be a better option. I know there's a config file for C lights for for real solar system. I just uh, am uh, going without that for a little bit now. Anyway, mission control. Temperature scans a Kerbin. Yes, I have deliberately avoided doing that uh, in the hope that I would. Uh, oh, it's uh, near a specific area. Hmm. Hmm. And then there's a different area for uh, visual surveys, but I can't do visual surveys without crew, and I'm not doing crewed missions right now. There is a uh, game. Ooh! Sounding rocket record 250,000 meters. That's interesting, but no extra science there. Proper stable orbit. Let's get that, and. Let's take a look at where this location is. Oh, it's just that they're both like right off the coast. Okay, no biggie. All right, uh, temperature scan over there. Fine, let's do that. All right, temperature scan. You got it. Okay, so we need a temperature scan there, and then we'll uh, go higher than we've ever gone before. But let's unlock some more technologies. I don't think I actually need them just yet, but uh, but might as well since we've got the science, and I want to see what the next tiers are. I don't have to buy the parts yet. Uh, remember, I did uh, leave that uh, thing, so I do need to buy the parts. And uh, right now, if I tried to buy all of them, they'd cost pretty much all of my funds. Uh, so that's another reason why cheap rockets are a good thing. Uh, yep, uh, this is going to cost another 25 cents, so it's it's not not too bad, this second tier. Oh, there's 40 there and 50 there, okay. Survivability, very expensive, and we've got a command pod there. Okay, that's doable. I, I don't think I need to unlock any of these parts for the missions that we have uh, going here. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. I'm curious to see how this Alpha 9 does in this deadly reentry regimen. So I'm going to launch it and maybe it'll be able to take out that contract for 250 kilometers. So let, let's try that out. I'm, I'm just curious and it might be might be the thing for that contract. All right, let's go for it. Uh, oh, it's got that mass, that thing where it's uh, reading the mass incorrectly. In fact, uh, I don't think this should be that heavy either. No, none of this should be that heavy. Okay, cancel that idea. I'm just going to make a new rocket because there's something wrong here. That's not 4.5 tons either. Okay, so this is the Alpha X and let me talk you through the innovations. First of all, by unlocking the new technology, we can apparently uh, increase the size, the diameter of our SRBs to more than 0.2. So I've got it at 0.3 here. I've limited it, but uh, we could probably go higher than that. Uh, tech level 1 is now possible, so that increases our ISP, so our efficiency is better with the solid fuel boosters. And so that is a 2 minute SRB stage. And then we've got the usual tank with the aniline and uh, refuming nitric acid attached to the AeroB sustainer. And we could probably, I, I don't know if there's uh, another variant of the sustainer here, uh, it's under WAC Corporal now. Um, let's see. There's uh, Aero B High and Aero B 150. Possibly those are other configurations we could use, but I don't think we need them right now. Maybe. Let's try it. Let's say I... Did that work? Okay, that's Aero B High. Okay, well, that, that's, that's better, I guess. 
yeah, I, I think I'll go with that. Uh, I don't think I need the even higher option, which is arrow B150. Arrow B high is fine. Um, you can see I've tried to limit the max thrust weight uh, to 4, which is very conservative, I think, for an unmanned rocket. And otherwise, we've got the SRBs. These are 0.25 in diameter now. Uh, also tech level 1, so better ISP, but uh, one minute still is the burn time. We're doing the SRBs first, no sender engine until later on. And, but we've, we've got some room. Uh, this reads the mass at 2.1 tons, this reads uh, 1.8. So still a discrepancy here for some reason. Not too sure what that business is about. And I am going to add some science for the first time. I'm going to add a thermometer. Of course we found out that the this has science in it in fact but now we're gonna have to do other science and since it's gonna be hard to reach oh uh, crew all oh, right uh, no action group so I was gonna action group the thermometer but there's no action group so I can't do that all right so I think this is good let me save this and it's a it's the most expensive rocket we've tried to launch hopefully it will make that contract to get to two two hundred fifty 250 kilometers let's find out there's no sneaky business with that contract. No, it's just reaching that. Okay, so here we go. Throttle up. And we should be good to go. Let's launch. Expectation is that this thing will definitely burn up in the atmosphere, so... So not too worried. Hopefully none of the debris is going to be too toxic. Looks like our launch azimuth is good this time. We're headed towards the east. Always nice when that happens. Velocity is pretty good this time. We're not under underwhelmed here. Let's see, could do a thermometer reading from here, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to uh, pre-ignite the aerobe. Okay, and off goes the SRVs. Whoa, that knocked us. That knocked us. Uh, whoa, we've got a little bit of a oscillation now. Part of the reason I pre-ignite the center engine is to avoid that sort of thing because, of course, if the center stack is not going very fast, uh, it's not going to clear the SRVs knocking into it. We've got a little bit of rotation, no way to correct that. But the important point is we're heading up and still uh, not towards land, so that's good. Temperatures are, are hot at least, but not unexpectedly so. Okay, excellent, the RV's out. Our pitch is still good, and SRV. This should get us way above 250. In fact, I would dare say that I'm probably going to miss out on another contract giving me a higher altitude just because this thing is going to go so high. So, with this perform temperature scan a Kerbin in this particular area we're gonna need fins so finally I'm going to have to bite the bullet and decide well we're deviating quite a lot aren't we anyway I'm going to have to uh, add fins to the equation so that I can control it and aim it at the location where we have to do the scan so I'll be able to control launch azimuth finally This thing is just spinning all over the place. 
Not quite the ideal situation, though I still think we're going to make our target. The Bahamas. You can get a good look at the land now. Not the greatest resolution ever. Florida, Bahamas, Cuba. This thing is going all over the place. I think maybe it's a temperature thing on one end of it. Maybe that's throwing it off a bit, or maybe it was just the decoupling of the SRBs that already had it unbalanced. We've already done space, but are we... Oh! Huh. Okay. Well, whatever it says. Oh no, we haven't done space with that. We did it with the probe core, not with the temperature scan. That's right. Still over grasslands. Um, well, I guess right now, because we were spinning round and round, maybe we are over grasslands now. Okay, SRV's out. Our apoapsis is 471 kilometers. Probably wouldn't have taken out. The next logical contract would have been like 500 kilometers, I guess. But we fulfilled this one. Okay. Okay. Re-entering the atmosphere. Uh, quality of landscape, not great. That's the Bahamas, all right. It looks like maybe uh, maybe the grasslands were one of the islands, but we're gonna land in the water. I think maybe is this over water? Can we can we all agree that this is water temperature scan? Yes, yes we can. Very satisfactory. But you're not gonna survive long enough to transmit that, are you? How about a probe situation report? Nah, you're gonna die. Slower than I thought it would be. But still, the important thing is things are going to blow up. Yeah, I would definitely say that the truth lies somewhere between the two versions of Deadly Reentry. This one is too lenient. Maybe I should just turn on the one of these other options. But not knowing what the options are, it's tough for me to plan. See, the whole thing is I have to know what's happening in order to build my rockets. It's a little bit hard to build a rocket when you have no clue. I mean, of course, you could test uh, all day long and try and figure out what's going on, like I did in the first episode. But I'd rather actually know what the atmosphere is like, <laughs> sort of, and what these options mean, really mean in terms of numbers, not just words. But anyway, uh, we're through. No connection anymore, anyway. Uh, that's a little bit weird. But then again, it was sub, uh, it was suborbital, so maybe we weren't going too fast. And this protective nose cone does have a high heat tolerance. And it was the part that was hitting the atmosphere. So maybe it does make sense. And of course, with the 6.5.0, when we were on our way down, it didn't get high, hotter than 800 degrees Celsius. So that was a bit weird, too. Don't know what to think about that. Okay, well, at least uh, it won't let us recover this, and we are in water, and it's splashed. That's that's a very positive thing. I like that it's splashed instead of just disappeared without making a sound. All right. Okay, so let's try and build something with fins to do this temperature scan. Okay, so I've decided to try something very simple and traditional first. And so we've just got a single tank, single stage with uh, Aero B uh, high, not the, not the base model. This is the upgraded version. So, uh, yeah, I think 11 thrust is it? 11.7 thrust. Okay, and but otherwise, uh, same idea. And just trying to get over there. I've got these uh, procedural wings, Mark 1, all moving, as you can see. Uh, they're pretty heavy and pretty expensive, too. Uh, let me just uh, temporarily remove them. You can see 0.5 tons there and 65 funds. Add these. 0.6 and 105 t uh, funds. So, of course, this inflates to 0.7, different rounding, I suppose. But uh, we'll see how this works. Not sure. And that's why I wanted to go as, as simple as possible first to try it out. All right, let's launch this. Okay, so here we are. And our target is, remind me, this is. Area 2VMAP. So 2VMAP, activate navigation. Oof, looks like straight up. 
What's the... Okay, it's, it's over here. Well, let's just go there. Let's see if we can go there. Okay, so throttle up, not that it matters, and launch. Whoa, very, whoa, 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 too much control, too much control. This has too much control, darn it. Uh, considering I don't have SAS stability or anything, this is way too much control. Uh, uh, was it fine controls is what caps lock okay maybe that'll help oh not really not really not not as much as I'd like okay holding it steady there we're going pretty fast this time Ooh, 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 don't do that. Just nudged my hand a little bit in the yaw direction and then suddenly started rolling. Not yaw direction, uh, I guess it was roll direction. Uh, come on. I think this might be my first use of fine controls, like... Uh, I need you to go a little bit further to the north here. Just a little bit further to the north. Don't overheat. I know how G forces are high. Okay, that's the end of the thrust. Okay, are we going to? Well, let me. St I've stuck a barometer here for no apparent reason. Uh, well, I'll, I can do it if I can. Um, doesn't say we're over the region. Maybe we didn't get out far enough. I'm just gonna wait patiently. D uh, okay, well, in flight above, so it has to be above. Where are we? We 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 should. No, we're a little bit too far south. Control is tough. Let's do the barometer quickly. Add that on here so we can send that science. So it's not a total waste. We got some science out of it. from Kerbin's upper atmosphere. Earth's, really. Uh, waiting for a message that says we're over the target. Don't know if we're gonna get one. Probably too far south this time. Good applapsis though. Not a bad job altogether. Just need to get the right launch azimuth next time. Yeah, I think uh, another one of these will do just fine. Oh, now, with the probe core, we haven't done uh, over water. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah. Oh, wait. Upper atmosphere over Kerbin's grasslands. I can... Whatever. Biome's a little bit funny right now. Maybe Bahamas or some island below us, I don't know. Whatever, as long as I get some science, it's fine. Oh, oh, oh! Um, no, no, no. Uh, log temperature. Yay! Okay, and uh, that's additional science, so transmit that too. Okay, well, mission fulfilled. So, how far off were we? Uh, well, it doesn't show the marker right now. So, not bad. Okay, we managed that contract. Pretty darn good. So, uh, to recap, uh, we, we did some uh, experimentation in this episode. We got to space. We got to 250 kilometers and beyond. And uh, we've uh, started using fins. And we managed to hit a target, uh, not as well as I would normally like. Uh, it uh, was very lenient on me this time. So uh, we'll have to do a better job of that. Uh, but this is my first time trying out uh, fins without SAS. So so that's interesting. First time in a long time I've used fine controls. 
Very interesting. All right, so I think that'll wrap it up for this episode, and I will have more episodes properly. In the next episode, I want to get to orbit. I mean, that's obviously the next contract. It's sitting there waiting for us. We know we've got to do it. Uh, we've got quite a lot of science now. We've got 42 science, so we can definitely unlock more parts, though. Uh, I've actually just been using the ones that we got initially, and I think I could probably continue for a little while with just those. So I'll see how long I can go with just using the initial parts instead of upgrade. Well, of course, I did take uh, advantage of the upgraded tech level and the larger SRBs. Uh, the SRBs we can expand to more than 0.2 meters now. So I did take advantage of my increased tech level, even though I didn't use uh, new parts per se. Okay, here we go. Well, uh, it's always interesting to monitor temperature. Reasonably high. Barometer probably could be done. Uh, is that the barometer? Yeah, that's the barometer. Come on, let me do it before it crashes. Okay, transmit. Still in line of sight, we can actually see the KSC from here. But I don't know if you'll have enough time to transmit all the data. Terminal velocity helping here. Okay, I guess we got that data. Definitely the wrong biome, and no point doing that. Okay, no big splash this time, just evaporation. All right, so yes, let's go back to the Space Center. And so with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.